All right, joining me in this segment, LeVar Arrington rejoins the show to talk about Houston Texans quarterback Deshaun Watson and some cryptic tweets he's been sending out, fueling speculation that perhaps the quarterback is dissatisfied in Houston after the uh, Bill O'Brien traded away star wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins. Let's read these tweets, and then we'll get LeVar's reaction. Tweet number one, don't deal with the lies and the frauds. That's why I don't get involved. What's up? Tweet number two, never take advice from a person who don't love you. You got to walk light. Got to stay above water. All right, so Deshaun Watson, unlike the tweet from Tyler Conway from Bleacher Report that started this speculation about maybe he was dissatisfied in Houston, but now he's put out these cryptic tweets. LeVar, uh... Is there a problem in Houston with Deshaun Watson? Uh, we got a problem in Houston. We we got a problem in Houston. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely a problem in Houston. When, I mean, come on. You just traded away his star guy, probably one of his close friends. Uh, the problem may not be with Houston. The problem may be with the guy who's making the decisions. Uh when he when Deshaun made that that comment, don't trust people that don't have love for you or don't love you. All the things that I've heard about Bill O'Brien has been his inability to connect with people on a personal level. And football is a sport where you got to have a, a level of trust. You got to have a level of admiration and respect and a show of of integrity as it applies to your relationships between your players, especially your leaders. I think this is a classic cry out cryptically. That's open. You could apply it to a mom. You could apply it to a financial advisor. You could apply it to a wife or a best friend. But we're applying this to Bill O'Brien right now. This is going straight at Bill O'Brien. Bill, you have got a message from your star player saying that you show no love and that we don't trust you. So we're going to stay above water until either I'm leaving here or you're leaving here. And that's what I think is going on right now. Yeah, I think this could be a situation where Deshaun Watson is the only guy in that Texans organization, perhaps other than J.J. Watt, with the leverage to put real pressure on Bill O'Brien and ownership like, hey, guys, what are we doing here with Bill O'Brien? And, and LeVar, I know you know this as a high school football coach and your involvement with so many young high school and young players all over the country, these young kids are different than my generation and even your generation because a lot of them have been disconnected from a male authority figure, starting with their dad. And so it is important that their football coach, particularly when the football coach puts that kind of demands on you, that you take a Dabo Sweeney type approach with a Deshaun mm -hmm. Watson. Dabo seems very connected to his players and his kids through his Christian love campaign. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think Bill O'Brien trying to apply a Bill Belichick approach without Bill Belichick's success. And then I, I, I just think, just think if you're the quarterback from a strategic standpoint, go back to their last game against the Kansas City Chiefs where Bill Belichick foolishly kicked a field goal instead of going for a touchdown in the first half, not realizing who he was playing against. Had the fake punt from deep in his own territory. So just even strategically, you're like, does this coach know what he's doing? Gave up probably way too much for Laramie Tunstall. Now just traded DeAndre Hopkins for a bag of peanuts because he couldn't get along with him. Deshaun Watson is probably putting pressure on the Texans organization He's the only guy that can do it, maybe other than J.J. Watt. Hey, man, we got a problem here with our head coach. I've I seen this take place when I was in Washington, um, and, and Coach Spurrier's son, uh, Bubba, uh, had, had said some stuff. That maybe he said it, maybe he didn't. But the players got a hold of it, and a couple influential players got a hold of it, uh, and it didn't end well. But once the players turn on you, and and you best believe there's some stuff going on internally that's being discussed right now as to 
what O'Brien is doing and why he's doing it, you're out of there. You you will be out of there as quickly as you came. You'll be gone because you can't get rid of all of the players. You can get rid of a coach. You can get rid of all the coaches, but you can't get rid of all the players. So if you lose that belief and that support in your players, you've lost your opportunity to be the coach and the leader of that team in particular. LeVar, let's move to Odell Beckham Jr. We got to be a little bit quicker. Odell, yep. the 49ers basically said they have no interest in trading for Odell Beckham Jr. Last year, they were a key competitor in trying to acquire Odell Beckham Jr. before the Giants traded him to the Cleveland Browns. I'm wondering, having just lost Emmanuel Sanders, the 49ers did, to come out and basically publicly admit they have no interest in Odell Beckham Jr., is this a bad sign of how Odell Beckham is viewed across the National Football League now? I won't say it's a bad sign, but it certainly isn't a great sign. Uh, if, you're, if you're the guy, if you're, if you're that superstar that, that you became while you were in New York, everybody's going to want you. Whether they can afford you, whether it's realistic to get you or not, everybody's still going to want you. So that is a little bit of an indictment on what people feel about their need for a guy like Odell Beckham. But I don't go all the way down the rabbit hole and say that he's not a wanted guy and still not a super valued guy uh, for a team. I think for teams that are interested in winning and winning right now, Odell Beckham Jr. has very little value. Odell Beckham Jr. is not all in on football. He costs too much money. He's not as great a player as everyone's made him out to be. He's benefited from a league that has gone soft. You, you got to basically get a police escort for wide receivers off the line of scrimmage Hi. these days. He's undersized. He's got a big mouth. He's a bit soft. He makes some spectacular catches, but he doesn't contribute to a winning environment. Everybody knows it. And I really think, again, I go back to what I was talking about yesterday and talking about again today. When we come out of this coronavirus, I think football people and decision makers, they're paying NFL players tons of money. If you can't be all in on football, if you're going to bring all this Mickey Mouse garbage to a, a franchise, I think teams are going to be more hesitant to get involved with those guys. And Odell Beckham Jr., to me, is example, exhibit A, B, C, and O, B, mm, and J. Andy. He mm. is the prime example of a guy I you don't saw want anywhere you near right your there. football team if you're trying to win a, a championship. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. And be sure to check out more of the best clips from Speak For Yourself or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.